What is happening people? My name is Robbie and we are back again for another reaction video. Today we are looking at CNBC Make It Again on YouTube. This time it's another new series. We're looking at a series called Side Hustle and the title of this video is Making $5,000 Extra a Month on Facebook Marketplace. Before I click play on this video, $5,000 a month is a lot of money. That's about £3,600, which is around £43,000 per year before tax, and that's a good salary. So I'm quite interested to see how this guy's making this much money on Facebook Marketplace. Another point I will make is, I hate Facebook Marketplace. Every single time I've tried to use Facebook Marketplace, it has blown up in my face. Here's a quick rundown of my experiences on Facebook Marketplace. I can post this iPhone on Facebook Marketplace for £300. The Facebook Marketplace conversation would go as follows. Hi. Is this available? Hi there. Yes, it's still available. Thanks. That's it. No response. Or another personal favourite. Hi, is this available? Hi there. Yes, this is available. Would you take £50? No, I've put it up for £300. I think there's a slight scuff on the screen. What about £60? After going through this a handful of times over the course of a week, I remove the post and the iPhone goes in a drawer, never to be seen again. So the fact that this guy's making a decent salary just through Facebook Marketplace it's quite intriguing. So let's get started and we'll see how he does it. And I'll just quickly like this video, which you should be doing on this video as well. And if you want to make my Easter weekend even better, you could subscribe as well. Right, here we go. During the busy season, which is the summer months, I make about four to $5,000 a month flipping quads and dirt bikes. I've probably made about 40 to $50,000 since I've started. My name is Ben Pryor. I am from Connecticut and I'm 23 years old. I went to go sell my first dirt bike and I realized that they were going for the around the same price that I bought it for. And I realized that, hey, maybe I can try to get like a hundred bucks extra when I sold it. and. I didn't even try to get a good deal or anything. And then I realized, hey, if I actually actively search for good deals, then maybe I could actually turn this into something where I'm making money and still having fun with the quads and dirt bikes. So I've seen this quite a lot online. People trying to push that thing where you can monetize your hobby. So for example, this guy enjoys riding dirt bikes. He can buy a dirt bike, use it for six months, a year, and then sell it for either the same amount that he paid for it or a profit and essentially funding his hobby. I've seen many people do this with cars as well, but the barrier to entry is very high because it doesn't really work with a Ford Fiesta, a Vauxhall Corsa. Realistically, you're looking to buy a limited edition Ferrari with low mileage, driving it every other Sunday, and then selling it if the market's still hot. So I think it's quite a specialist thing. So the fact that this guy's making money off of a hobby is pretty impressive. And the fact he's making five grand a month from a hobby is very impressive. I look for these things almost every single day, and if they are a good deal, it's gonna go fast. Ideally, it's kind of beaten up. I walk around and I basically look for things to pick wrong with it. This is things like the seat cover. If the brake levers are broken, then I'll say I'm gonna need to get new brake levers. If the back tire has no tread, a lot of tires will be bald with no tread. I'm gonna say, hey, I need to get a new back tire for this bike. So ultimately he's looking for a bike that needs work done to it. This is a pretty simple business strategy that is used in many industries. It's in the same vein of looking for a house that needs a lot of renovation and beating someone down on the price just a little bit because ultimately you're not making money when you sell something, you're making money when you buy it. The less money that you can pay for the item, the more profit that you're locking in for future when you sell it. So he's obviously not looking on Facebook Marketplace for a dirt bike that's brand new in good condition, he's looking for something that needs a little bit of work where he can add value and charge a markup for the time that he's put in and the effort he's put in to bring it back up to standard. So basically I know the market around for dirt bikes in my area and so I'll look for bikes that just recently got posted and I see that they're posting it for a little bit underneath the market value and then they say or best offer or looking to get rid of this before the weekend, I wanna get something else. And I could tell very quickly when speaking to them where their head's at with the price. And from there, I'll know to either try to get the price down before I even get there or 
I know that I can negotiate in person. And it's even better if I get them down beforehand because now I know when I come to them, the price is already, you know, not where he originally offered. It's now down to where I got him to before on the phone. And then from there, that's also a good tactic where he's keeping an eye out for people looking for a quick sale. Ultimately, if they're looking for a quick sale, they're probably going to give you a better price for it because they would rather have the money today than wait another week and maybe make an extra hundred dollars. I know that I can also now I haven't even seen the bike yet and I could walk around it. I could say, oh, I need to get new tires for it. I need to do this for it and really get the price down on the spot. He made me find the quad myself and then negotiate with the person on the site. I had to do all the numbers with this 30 year old man. You know, he was there with me, but I was the one with the money in my hand and negotiating. And that's how I got my first quad or dirt bike. Even though, you know, it was his money, he, he made me do the work and it really helped me and it makes me feel comfortable negotiating now. That's obviously a really good lesson that his dad's taught him when he was young. His dad didn't hold his hand through the whole situation. It gave him the money and said, figure out the price for yourself. You do that a couple of times when you're a teenager. By the time you're a fully grown adult, you'll be a tough negotiator whether you like it or not. And that's obviously paying dividends now that he's doing this so often and he's making a good income from it. You could probably put down a decent amount of that success down to the fact that his dad taught him negotiation skills very early on. I will take it home and clean it up as much as I can. I look to do things that are small, but they make a big difference. Really cleaning it down, making it all nice and shiny, because a lot of these people who sell them to me, they're, they're really just dirty. They pull them out of their shed. So I'll clean it up, add little things like new grips, new plastic kits, things that shine the bike up, and obviously make sure that it runs good. Perfect example, he's comfortable holding the bikes for months knowing he can get a better price at the right time. He's not in a position where he needs a quick sale, so he's not going to have to sell it for a low price, like mentioned previously. No one's going to be able to come to him today and say, I can buy it off you today, but I'm going to give you $300 less than you're looking for. He's in a position he can hold that until he gets the price that he wants, or at least close to the price that he's looking for. That puts you in a position of power when you're negotiating on an item like that. My dad has always helped me out a lot and he has taught me when everybody zigs that you zag. In the fall when everyone's looking to get rid of their dirt bikes, that's the best time to actually buy them. So during the busy season, which is the summer months, I make about four to $5,000 a month flipping quads and dirt bikes. I could do about 20 to 25 of them in a summer. What you got to think about when you're going to buy these bikes is any single dollar that you get down on the price of the buying is money that you can make when you sell it. This guy's just repeating what I'm saying. We're on the same wavelength here. Obviously, I've already made this point. You're making money when you buy, not when you sell. So he's haggling people down on price and that's just basically money in his pocket when he sells the bike later on. Just get one and look to make money off the first one, whether it's three to four hundred dollars, and then you just reinvest it and you get another one, and all of a sudden you flip three of them and you've made fifteen hundred dollars. Bear with me. I'm gonna try to make videos at least once a week. What helps me the most is I. Oh, so he's a content creator. There's a link to his YouTube channel in the description. So his name on YouTube is Ben Pryor. So if you want to check him out, it looks like he posts a lot of content about trading and stock investing, which is quite interesting. I know that at home I have two quads sitting right now, which is basically cash that I know I could get for in the spring. So it's like a kind of a security blanket. It gives me the ability to work on other income streams. So it's Monday morning. I opened up with my group on uh, the Discord chat. It's just to show whether it's quads or dirt bikes that there's, there's opportunities to make money in everything, whether it's a hobby, whether it's a side hustle. If you're passionate about something, if you like something a lot, then you should try to find a way to make money with it.
Very true. So we see this a lot in various industries, particularly if it's your hobby, if it's what you're passionate about, what you're interested in, you can probably make some money from it. You see it all the time with Jordans, Yeezys, watches, bikes, motorbikes, cars. If you're interested enough in a particular thing and you know it well enough, you, you'll you start to pick up quite quickly on what's a good price, what's a bad price, what people might be looking for. And a good point that Ben's made in this video is to reinvest your money. So Ben's making between five and $700 per bike that he buys and then sells. I don't know if he's taking that as income just to pay his bills and things like that, or if he's always reinvesting all that money. The longer that you reinvest that money, the quicker you can scale. You might start off buying one bike, selling it and making four or $500. But if you keep reinvesting the money, then you're making five grand a month. Then maybe you get a commercial unit and you've got 10 bikes in there at any one time. There's not really a ceiling to where that stops. So if you're watching this right now and you've got a hobby or an interest that other people are interested in, then there's 100% a way that you can make money from it. I think this video shows that it's possible to make money no matter what your hobby is. Someone's making money in that industry, so why can't you do the same? Well folks, another short and sweet one. I received some good feedback on the reaction video last week, so I'm gonna try and keep going with the reaction video on a Monday and then the main video on a Friday. We'll keep that going for now, see how things go. I'm enjoying making them, and you know that if you're enjoying watching them, I'll keep making them. And just a quick point at the end of the video, in the previous video I mentioned there was a few targets for April, so we're now at 202 subscribers, we're picking up steam. 18 likes on the previous video and we're looking for 20 per video, so that's decent. And I think that if I'm putting out a video on a Monday and a Friday, the 2,000 views in the month of April is probably gonna happen. I don't want to speak too soon. If I'm doubling the amount of videos that I'm posting, then it's quite likely. But if you haven't subscribed and you haven't liked this video yet and you haven't watched all the other videos, get cracking. I've got targets to hit. And I think we'll call it a day there. Thank you for watching and let me know in the comments what hobbies of yours are you gonna turn into a side hustle in 2021? Take it easy.